Hi, I'm Sebin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Battery Management System or BMS, a Primer to Passive Battery Balancing. Now, what is the purpose of a battery management system or BMS? First of all, it's to monitor the state of charge, that is to see how much charge do we have in the battery, to identify faulty batteries, and to balance the battery. That is, if we have a battery which is, has a higher state of charge than the others, we'd like to balance all of them. We have to measure temperature for protection. In general, you might say that the BMS is ensuring the well-being of the serially connected batteries, which are usually a substantial uh, part of the cost uh, of a system. Now, in the case of a lithium ion battery, you have to worry about two things. First, the overvoltage of a battery shortens the life of the battery. And moreover, charging an overcharged battery can seriously damage it. So you have to be very careful not to overcharge it when it's already charged. So the balancing objective is to actually make the state of charge of all the battery equal. In fact, uh, in practice, it's very difficult to measure the state of charge. So in practice, normally we are talking about equal voltages, which are sort of expressing the state of charge. Now, there are two ways of uh, balancing. One is using passive balancing, which I'm going to discuss in this video. And in this case, we are in fact wasting the extra power that is, if there is a battery which is sort of more charged than the other, we are sort of discharging it with an external circuitry. I'm going to talk about it. And this power is being wasted. On the other hand, there is an active balancing uh, method in which we transfer energy from, say, one battery which is, has a higher state of charge to another battery or to other batteries which, has a, which have a lower state of charge. Obviously, some of the power is lost, but some is saved because we are moving power from one battery to another. So as I've said, uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to discuss the passive balancing method. Now, the method of, of passive balancing is really very simple in principle. We are talking about, First of all, monitoring the batteries, that is, we have to measure the voltages normally of the batteries. And then we have switches, usually MOSFETs, uh, normally with serious resistors because we don't want to heat up the MOSFET. And whenever uh, there is a need, we just close the switch and we dissipate the extra power in this resistor. So this is really the basic uh, configuration of a passive uh, battery balance. Now, if we look at the um, curve voltage versus uh, capacity of state of charge of, say, a lithium ion battery, we see something of this nature. Well, these values really depend on the chemistry. Sometimes it's higher or lower, but in general, we are talking about a span of about one volt from full charge to just about empty battery and uh, so this is really the 100 percent uh, capacity so therefore if one volt is 100 percent then for one percent we are talking about a 10 millivolt chain approximating this to a straight line so the resolution resolution we are talking about is in the millivolt range which means that monitoring is not trivial we have to be very careful in measuring the voltages. So basically, uh, we would have a module around each cell which looks like this. We'll have a switch with a resistor, the purpose of which is to bypass, um, you might say, current in the case of charging, or sometimes even when not charging, and we'll talk about it, uh, just to dissipate or discharge partially uh, the cell. We need a control to monitor the voltage, uh, switch on and off uh, the transistor, and we need, of course, communication somehow, because uh, 
it's not an isolated uh, situation. We have to compare the voltage to the other batteries in many times, not always, depending on the mode of operation, I'll talk about it, but in most cases, most, uh, say, better approaches, we would like to know what is the voltage of the other battery, so we need some sort of a communication. So it could be either daisy chain or it could be uh, communication to a processor that... One concern that we have to worry about is the power dissipated by the switches because it really depends on the mode of operation and obviously we are heating up this, this all, power, all the power is going to heat and temperature will rise so we have to have a um, heat removal system here or to work with low current and I'll talk about this uh, compromise later on. So the question is how much current do we have to have to bypass or discharge the battery and what's the power dissipation uh, expected? Now, a cell is, uh, say, lithium iron is about, uh, say, three and a half uh, on the average volt. So one amp is three and a half watts. And uh, so we have to worry about the power uh, that we have to, or the heat that we have to remove. Now, the balancing can take uh, place in two situations or two different approaches. One we can do the balancing only during charging. The other one is to do the balancing always. That is, the balancing circuit is always connected to the battery. It's doing its job continuously during charging, discharging, and rest. When you're talking about uh, balancing during charging, there are actually two options here. You can either wait until a battery reaches the maximum and then bypass the charging current or discharge it partially. Another option is to start the distinguishing between the higher voltage battery and the lower voltage battery from the beginning of charging so that the battery with the higher voltage will get a lower charge. Okay, I'll talk about it in a second and discuss these two options and the other options. So let's start with the balancing during charging and talk about scenario one, that we discharge only when a battery reaches over voltage. So here it is shown pictorially. We have batteries which are being charged. One battery has a higher voltage. So it's being charged too. And then it reaches the maximum voltage specified. At this point, we have to activate the discharge circuit or the balancing circuit. Now, obviously, if we don't want this battery to go on charging, we have this bypass current to be equal to the charging current. Otherwise, the battery will still be charged at a lower current, but still being charged. So in this case, we activate the bypass or discharging circuit only when the battery reaches the maximum. And for this to be safe and practical, we have to have the uh, bypass current equal to the charging current, which could be a high current and we might have a problem removing uh, the heat. On the other hand, if during discharge we can identify the battery with the higher voltage from the beginning, then we can bypass some of the charging current for that battery along this charging time such that it will reach the maximum with all the other batteries which are charged with a higher current. This is much more preferable. So, Let's have a look at the, in more detail into scenario two in which we start the, uh, operating the balancing circuit from the beginning of the charging. Okay, let's assume that we have a battery uh, bank uh, that has 20% uh, of its full capacity, so we have to charge it 80% of the capacity. 
Let's assume there is a battery which has a maximum deviation of 20 millivolts. It's higher 20 millivolts. It's a bit high, but let's just take it as an example. Now, this battery then has to be charged 60% because uh, it's already 40%, 20 plus this 20. Okay? So now the charge time for the normal battery, which is uh, with the lower voltage, will be the amp hours time 0.8 because we need 80% and over the uh, charge current this is the time now if you want this time to be equal to uh, the, the cell with the higher voltage then we have here 0.6 of amp hour divided by the lower current that is the charge current minus the bypass or the dissipated current uh, by the switch and this comes to be uh, a one-fourth of the charge current. So it's a big difference. Spread over a longer time and the peak power that you need is much lower. So this will be a much better way to go. So early balancing is really advantageous. Now, what about the case in which we always balance? That is the unit, the balancing unit is always connected. Now, Ideally, eventually, most of the cell will be balanced and the deviation will be small. But let's take the extreme case. Suppose we start the process. We have a deviation of delta V for the a cell with a higher voltage. So we need to remove delta V over one volt of the capacity uh, from this particular one. And the time that it will take will be this value divided by this balancing current that we decide. Let's take an example. Suppose the deviation is again 200 millivolt, it's a 0.2 volt. Let's assume the battery is 50 amp hour. Let's assume that the bypass or balancing current is 0.1 amp, which is very moderate and very easy to handle. And then we see that we need 100, 100 hours to balance. Well, that's not bad because it's a beginning. And then uh, the deviations are going to be smaller and smaller. So this uh, unit will always have to handle small deviations if the batteries are in good shape. Otherwise, there is a problem, of course. Now, if one wants to design its own BMS, then there are two issues uh, to be concerned about. One is that you have to measure floating voltages in the middle range. That's not trivial. And then we have the poor problem of heat removal. So these are the main concerns here. And obviously one can uh, design a system uh, of its own uh, with discrete components. On the other hand, there are commercial BMS modules. There are many companies who are making now BMS modules that you can uh, sort of put in tandem. That is, it, a unit will serve an X number of batteries, say six or 10 or 12. And if you have more batteries in the, in the uh, bank, then uh, you just uh, put more units, more modules like that. Well, these are relatively expensive but uh, they are accurate and very flexible because then you can adjust them to whatever configuration you have. Now, I'm going to show an example. Again, this is just for educational purposes. Uh, there is no endorsement or recommendation here. This is just one example. There are many companies who are making uh, similar uh, modules. So here it is. This is module and I think it is for, uh, let's see, six batteries, six batteries. It has an internal switches, but you can use outside external switches. Uh, the control will accommodate external switches. Shown here are the resistors for dissipating. This is just a filter here for monitoring the voltages. And then we have an A to D with a multiplexer and then a quite a bit of uh, hardware related to communication so you can uh, daisy chain all these units and then eventually bring them down to say a processor that will 
control all these units and compare them, etc., with time schedule and whatever. So this will be an example of one commercial unit and the performance is really very nice. So here is the um, example of the performance. Here we see the voltage error, measurement error of the voltage. One cell, this is the lower cell, as a function of the voltage of the whole assembly because we are accommodating a number of cells up to 30 volt and we see that we are talking about the range of maximum 0.5 millivolt and this is for between minus 40 and 125 and here is uh, the common mode error as a matter of fact this is the fifth cell when you have a different number of cells below it and here it's increasing and again we see we're talking about uh, less than 0.5 uh, millivolt error in the measurement which is of course very respectable so this brings me to the end of this presentation i thank you very much for your attention i hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future thank you very much